Hey everybody, Bobby Klink from Your Online Genius here. Um, I'm trying uh, Ecamm Live one last time. I've had some problems with it. I'm hoping it's working this time. I hope you're able to see the video and, and see everything else. But it uh, looks like it's working on my end. I'm going to keep going. If we get cut off, I'm uh, actually going to just go ahead and start uh, a new live video uh, on the site directly. But uh, hopefully it's going to work this time. Uh, Again, I'm Bobby Klink from Your Online Genius. Uh, I'm an intellectual property lawyer and an online entrepreneur. Uh, I help other online entrepreneurs protect their online businesses and make sure that they are not getting themselves into legal jeopardy. That's what I do for a living every day, um, day in, day out. Uh, I, I used to deliver the services in one-on-one -on -one settings directly through a law firm, uh, but I started Your Online Genius in response to problems I kept seeing where I kept seeing online entrepreneurs making mistakes that were really, you know, pretty basic to a lawyer, but things that I got it, that if you're not a lawyer, you wouldn't understand and you wouldn't see and you wouldn't know you were making a mistake. And I would see them later in the process and sometimes it was too late to fix them. So it drove me nuts. So I was trying to figure out a way to, to, to solve that. So Your Online Genius is my way to do that. It's um, a business where I provide educational resources, free and paid, to help online entrepreneurs get their legal affairs in order before they can afford to hire someone like me by the hour. Um, it's kind of a, hey, let's, let's not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Let's give you the do-it-yourself tools until you get to the point that you can justify spending $10,000 or more on, on a lawyer like me to, to really dig in and make sure that you are fully protected uh, to the best of your ability. Uh, today we are uh, continuing with our theme week. Our theme week this week is on course creation and the law. And today's video we're going to talk about uh, the right to publicity and the issues that come up in creating a course with the right to publicity. Uh, it's an important issue because in every course you are going to be using someone else um, and someone else's right to publicity because quite honestly it's a, it's a key part of what we do. Now, the right to publicity is one of the areas of intellectual property. It's really the only one where the law is pretty much all at the state level. There's a little bit of federal law, and it can vary from state to state. But the critical aspect is that everyone has the right to control their name, their image, and their likeness. No matter where you are, you have that right in the United States. Other states, I mean, some states have you know, further protections, like literally protect your signature. So somebody can't show your signature without your permission, but that's not the case everywhere. But the important part of this is that you can't use someone else, their name, their notoriety, uh, their importance to promote your brand. So there's, you know, a couple of issues here in course creation that we need to talk about with respect to the right to publicity. Um, the first one is something that's not going to apply in every case. But let's say you have a big name, whether it's an, you know someone in your space, an online entrepreneur in your space, uh, or someone else who either has taken your course or has looked it over and you know sends you an email and says, "Hey man, this is awesome. This is what everybody needs." You know, just they just say something like that in an email, right? You, I mean, if I got that, say, from one of the top online entrepreneurs, I sure would want to put out there to the world to tell the world and my potential um, students, hey, this is what, you know, so-and-so said. But the problem is that the right to publicity prevents me from doing that if I don't get permission from the person whose name I want to use. Because, again, let's just say, you know, let's use a, a funny hypothetical. Let's say you had a course and I took it. And, you know, I said great things about it. Well, you couldn't say, hey, Bobby from Your Online Genius says this is the, the greatest thing since sliced bread because you would be using my name. And if you put my picture, you'd then be using my image to try to promote and sell your course. That is something you can't do. And, again, think of it, that's the first issue is in the, on the level of, of an endorsement from a famous person. And famous here doesn't have to mean, you know, a, a celebrity, uh, you know, in, in Hollywood. It's someone who has any kind of level of celebrity, notoriety, etc. Those people will tend to be the most protective of their, um, you know, of their name, image, and likeness, of their publicity rights. Because let's be honest, you know, these top name entrepreneurs you know, if they're going to promote your course, they're going to want to do it as an affiliate or something else where then they get 
um, some revenue out of it because, let's be honest, their name is helping to sell the course in most cases. So you have to be really careful and really vigilant when you are talking about a big name uh, in the space. If you start using or are tempted to use that, you definitely need to get permission. But the right to publicity isn't limited to celebrities. Every person has the right to control their own name, image, and likeness. Even you know, random person on the street who nobody's ever heard of has that right. So what that means and how that comes in in a course creation setting is with your testimonials. Testimonials are obviously great social proof to, to help people uh, you know, convince people to buy your course. And it could be a testimonial from someone who's taken the course, or it might be a testimonial from a prior client, someone else who you helped, you know, uh, one-on-one or in, in a different setting. Well, they've given you this, this wonderful review, for example, but you can't use it without their consent. So you just need to make sure that for testimonials, you have the right uh, documentation in place to ensure that uh, the people who are going to appear as testimonials in text with their name, with their, uh, um, with their image especially, but any, even if you just use their name, they need to have given you ex- express consent to use it. And so, again, you can do that in a couple of ways. You can have them sign a written document. You could have a testimonial form where they have to click a box um, electronically that's saying that they're giving you permission to use it, uh, which is one of the easiest ways to do it, obviously. Um, But again, you just need something in writing where they have given you permission to use their name, their image, and their likeness uh, as part of your course promotion. Okay, so that is the big issue. And now going back to the celebrities, it's the same thing. Look, if you have a celebrity online entrepreneur who wants to endorse your product, if you can get a written agreement from them, do it. Use the endorsement, but get the written agreement from them telling you that you are allowed to use their name, image, and likeness in promoting your course. Again, I think a lot of people will do that. If, if you know they actually believe it's valuable, they're going to provide that or they might provide that. You know, if you have, um, you know, an affiliate program, they may want to do it through the affiliate program. But if not, they might just be willing to say, hey, I think this is important enough to get out there to tell people about. Again, so I could imagine, for example, that, you know, if, if I developed a course on podcasting and the law, as an example, that some big names in, in podcast world who advise other people on podcasting issues, like on how to start a podcast and all that, you know, they might see my course take and say, man, this is a very valuable thing I need to tell my clients about it so they may want to do that and they might want to promote it without any affiliate if I just said well I'm not going to do an affiliate program but I would need to get a written signed document from them saying you know in again let me be clear when I say signed document it could be an email something in writing from them where they agree that I can use uh, their name image and likeness to promote the course so that's what the right to publicity has to do with um, you know, it has to do with trying to use someone else to promote your brand. And you've got to be careful. Again, I'll be honest with you, nine times out of ten, it's, it's not going to be an issue if you don't get, get the signature um, from someone. It's most likely to become an issue if um, you use a celebrity or a, a big name person without getting express consent. Um, but it can happen with a testimonial. And, and, you know, especially if you get a testimonial, just, you know, an email back from somebody that says, hey, man, this course was awesome. It helped me do X, Y, and Z. Thank you so much. Because in that context, that person really isn't giving you, you know, saying, hey, you can use this. And, you know, hopefully your students who go through your course and, you know, and loved it and got something out of it aren't going to fight with you and aren't going to be mad. But I'll just tell you, there are times when people have a falling out six months later, a year later, whatever, and that person might then complain that you're using their name, image, and likeness without permission. Uh, So again, if you have students who are getting through your course uh, and being successful, they should be more than willing to give you a testimonial. So, you know, do it. And just ask them and and make sure that they say yes. So that's it. Uh, We've covered the issue of the right to publicity in the context of course creation. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be back with another lesson. Uh, the, the, that's going to be, let me look, um, about issues related to naming your course and the images that you use in co- your course. So it's, 
a couple of different issues. Uh, I put them in the what you have to do to make sure you don't get sued category. So that's what we'll be talking about tomorrow. Also, if you're liking this, uh, I'm you know going to keep doing my noon lives on these mini legal uh, lessons. I'm also going to be doing some other lives, though, uh, where I'm going to be documenting my journey uh, as an online entrepreneur. Those will not be the noon times. They will be at other times. I'll be talking about you know the struggles I'm going through as I'm developing my own course, uh, a little you know, heads up, you know, that people will be learning about soon. I'm going to be launching a podcast. We'll be talking about that a lot over the next couple of months. So, you know, you'll be hearing about what I'm going through to build my list, to build my platform, to, to do all of these things. Cause I think it's valuable for you to hear, Hey, I really am doing the same things that you are. Uh, so if you're enjoying all of this, I hope you'll uh, like the page. So you see the things, you know, see when I go live and get the information, if I get Ecamm going, uh, I will be scheduling all of these calls, uh, at least the daily uh, lives at noon, so that you know when they're coming and you can um, uh, make sure that you're here to see it. But the other thing I would, I would encourage you to do is if you're liking the information I get, I've got a cheat sheet that covers the four biggest legal issues that I see over and over again coming up. Uh, these are things that can really destroy your business if you don't get them right. And so the cheat sheet walks through what those are and what you need to be doing instead. So you can get that at mistakes.youronlinegenius.com. Again, that's mistakes.youronlinegenius.com. Till next time, uh, have a great day.